Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Happy Tuesday, it's a good day. And it's a good day for me to tell you about today's video sponsor, Synergy. Do you have more than one computer requiring you to have more than one keyboard and mouse set up on at least one or more desks? Well, with Synergy, you no longer have to deal with headaches like that because it allows you to share a mouse and keyboard across a whole host of devices, whether it be from Windows or Mac or even Linux, you can use Synergy to connect from one computer to another so that you only have one keyboard and mouse and you don't need to get expensive solutions like a KVM switch. You can just do it with their software. You, you can get their basic license for $29 for a lifetime use case, no monthly subscription, or their pro license, which includes SSL encryption for $39. If you use the link in the video description, you're gonna be able to check it out. You can avoid all that keyboard and mouse confusion, which one goes to what setup, especially if you're on the same desk, it's horrible. Check out the link in the video description, simlist.com forward slash synergy forward slash UFD tech to get it, do it. Our, our sponsor can make your life less complicated, but life, it's complicated. And so it looks like tech products could see a massive rise in price in the coming few months thanks to the coronavirus. Hey! So what's coming out in the news right now is that certain city governments in China are having their workers stay home from work, which includes the entire city of, I'm going to mispronounce it, Susao. Su Suzhou. Suzhou. It's terrible. Anyways, the entire city of Suzhou has told their employees to stay home from work at, until at least February. And this city is home to tons of manufacturing and fabrication plants, including the likes of Foxconn, which makes a lot of motherboards and produces a lot of boards for Apple. Then you also have Samsung with some of their electronics fabrication taking place in this city. Nothing with regards to their phones. They actually shut down their last phone fabrication facility in China. I think it was back in October. But then also you have pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies like Johnson & Johnson. But as the coronavirus is spreading and as the worries of it are growing with the death toll continuing to rise, like certain city governments in China are taking stand, this obviously could spread to other regions. This isn't the first type of shutdown that we've seen. We've seen that the city of Wuhan with over 10 million people has completely shut down, no entrance or exits allowing to go through. So it does seem like the coronavirus is affecting tech side of things and could potentially spread to more major cities in China where there might be more fabrication facilities where they're not necessarily allowed to go uh, and actually produce things. And then on top of that, you have companies like ByteDance and Tencent who are telling their workers to stay home. ByteDance owns TikTok. Tencent owns a lot of different things, including a little bit of Epic Games, which is known for something like Fortnite. And then on top of that, the Chinese government as a whole extended the Lunar New Year so that people wouldn't necessarily have to go back to work. So there's a lot of different moving parts at this point that it's obviously just the beginning of the outbreak of the virus. It's not quite so deadly yet. It's only, it's not even as deadly as the latest flu season from 2019 to 2020, but obviously this is really only affecting one country at this point. And if it happens to spread, it could potentially make things worse. If it makes its way over to Taiwan, where there's things like TSMC, which produces GPUs and a whole bunch of other stuff, we could see tech products pricing go up even further because of the shutdown, which would reduce the supply of all of the tech products. So this is, Concerning, obviously we would have to keep an eye on it and see as this progresses and I don't necessarily want to hyperbolize or disasterify what's going on right now, but it does seem like something that could happen more continuously or frequently as the Chinese government tries to get the coronavirus under control. What do you think of the fabrication stuff being shut down? Let us know down below in the comments. But even though Apple might be affected by Foxconn and it's shut down, it looks like they might necessarily have some future ideas beyond what's happening right now for a iMac that is made out of a single piece of curved glass. I mean, you could just see the patent right here. It's an unusual design, not something that you would necessarily expect a computer, but a curved sheet of glass that becomes like your palm rest. And then it has a little back dock where all of the components go. And then it has a slot for a keyboard. So you can put that in there. It's intriguing whether or not it's gonna come out remains to be seen, but the patent has been filed for. So maybe a single sheet of glass iMac so that when your kids are playing near your computer desk and they accidentally hit it, it shatters all over the floor and you no longer have a computer. That'd be great. Fantastic stuff. I'm all for more breakable computers, especially with Apple who's known for not allowing people to repair things. It's, it's perfect. It's a win-win for everybody. You buy more iMacs because they break more often. And if you're looking to buy a new phone, 
weird segue, the Galaxy S20 Plus, S20 Ultra, and the new Galaxy Buds Plus have been pictured in a promotional image nearby, confirming the fact that it's gonna be called the S20 when it launches on February 11th for the next Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event. But while we expect Samsung to copy Motorola for their upcoming Z Flip, which is the clamshell razor-like flappable foldable phone that's coming out, it looks like Motorola might be copying a little bit of Samsung's playbook with the upcoming Galaxy Note rival known as the Edge Plus from Motorola. It's supposed to have a stylus and supposed to be a big phone. I thought Motorola was dead. They're coming back with the razor. I just... Why? Who, who wants Motorola? And in the last little bit of phone notes, it looks like Google is finally ready to release what is supposed to be the AirDrop alternative on Android known as Nearby Sharing. This is probably one of the biggest things that's been available on iOS for quite some time that just Android users don't even know that they're missing for the easy shareability of files and discovery. It's, it's much nicer than just having to try to figure out how to navigate in Bluetooth menu settings. And it's complicated on Android, obviously there's apps, but having it baked into the OS makes it a much simpler feat. But speaking of simple, it looks like Intel and other power supply manufacturers are looking to create a new standard for power supplies called the ATX12VO, which means that it basically uses only 12 volts on the power supply connector, replacing the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt connectors that come on that, and then instead relying on the motherboard to do that conversion for you instead of having it supplied from the power supply to simplify the connectors and make them smaller. Whether or not this will get massively adopted, who knows, but with names like Intel behind it, it could potentially work out. And then just a quick little GPU update. It looks like PNY is releasing new passively cooled quadros. The RTX 8000 and 6000 are getting versions of them that can be put in servers and have those high CFM fans just blow all the air across it and make it so that they're cool. They have lower TDP, so they're slightly less performing, but in case you want less noise from the graphics card itself, there you go. Speaking of RTX stuff, it looks like id Software has said nay to RTX in Doom Eternal. Not that they didn't look into it, they, they just thought that they couldn't do it better than anybody else. It wouldn't help expand their user base. And so basically it was just useless. But they do expect that they will be using ray tracing in the future, but with Doom Eternal currently being on Xbox One and PS4, which don't support ray tracing whatsoever. And then with only PC having it, it's really not worth it. Potentially with the next generation of consoles and the next version of Doom, we might see it. But as of right now, it just doesn't serve a whole purpose. But even though you can't get ray tracing, it is a nice feature, which is what I think of this Galax Hoff Pro M.2 PCI Express NVMe SSD. I think we talked about this in a hot news ages ago when it was first announced, but now they're coming out. Reviews are finally out here. It's a Hoff SSD with a white PCB. This thing is gorgeous. For any white theme builds that you might have, they give us a white PCB as opposed to Asus who's releasing their white edition with black PCB. You cowards, give us a white PCB. Spend the extra money on developing it. Galax is the only one who's doing PCBs correctly when it comes to snow theme builds or white pure white builds. It's just, come on, everybody get on the program. Everybody should have at least one white PCB in their product line. Speaking of Asus being cowards, they're not cowards when it comes to the portable monitor game because the portable monitor that was unveiled at Computex has officially been, I, what, they're launching it? I hate launches like this because it's just on paper. There's nowhere, there's no pricing anywhere. There's nowhere you can possibly buy it. Like it's the weirdest launch ever, but we've seen this with so many different products. Anyways, Asus is launching their 240 Hertz, 17 inch, three millisecond response time, ref adaptive refresh rate, portable monitor. 240 hertz, it's crazy. It has a 7,800 milliamp hour built-in battery, which should be able to get you, I believe it said three hours of total usage on it. 240 freaking hertz in a portable monitor, my friends. I'm just waiting on the price, but I, I gotta get one because I need that portable refresh rate, it's great. And then we got some a little bit of electric vehicle news. It looks like Rivian has announced the prices for its R1T and R1S electric pickups should be less than they initially indicated. They said that originally it would sell for 69 or $72,000, but now it's looking more like 61 and a half and $65,000 for their electric pickups. Obviously this is a bit more than the mid entry point of the Cybertruck, but there are a few features in the Rivian that are just not available on a Tesla vehicle, like the tank turn, with its quad motor setup where it can go spin in a 360 degree circle, as well as the fact that it's gonna have an electrochromic glass roof. It looks amazing, but we'll have to see if they actually sell enough to stay alive as a business, which Porsche, doesn't have any trouble staying alive as a business as of late. And it looks like they're gonna finally spend some money 
on a Super Bowl ad. Yes, the electric vehicle, the Taycan, is gonna be its first Super Bowl ad in 23 years. Obviously, it's a weird car. I don't understand it necessarily. You get less range and less performance than a Model S for double the price. It's a, it's a weird car. I don't understand the Taycan, but you know, I just, maybe I'm not Porsche's target market. That's just me. And then GM has announced that they're gonna be investing $2.2 billion to build electric vehicles in Detroit. So this looks like they're finally taking it seriously. It looks like in 2021, they're gonna start converting one of their current facilities into a production line for their batteries of their electric vehicles, which should come out more in 2021. Obviously they have the volts and the bolts, but they're expected to also come out with an electric pickup. And then there's also the rumor of the electric Hummer, which is supposed to be unveiled in a Super Bowl ad with LeBron James. So we'll have to wait and see if that's actually the truth. But GM finally taking electric vehicles seriously years after Tesla has just been ruining them with it. And maybe it's not too late for them, or maybe it is, and they're gonna go the way of the dinosaur. But Tesla is looking to de-dinosaur their electric vehicles even further by refreshing the Model S and the Model X with new hardware incoming, at least according to a leaker. Tesla hasn't officially announced this, but people have back-rooted some firmware to allow them to see what is actually coming. So supposedly there's gonna be a new Qi charger for the S and the X cards, two new types of batteries in several different configurations in the S and the X, new lumbar, which would mean new seats, a new charge port type, a new suspension, version and this seems to be imminent at least according to the leaker whether or not that's actually true or whether or not there's any release dates coming out for this we'll have to wait and see but a refreshed version of the s and the x would be great because it's been they're, they're quite long in the tooth now as far as like the Model 3 has so many different new features that are just not present in the S and the X. Speaking of features the company Eve has announced their new Spectrum monitors which has quite a few good feature sets. They're all IPS one millisecond response time displays coming in at 27 inches. But not only that, they have HDR 600 normal brightness and 750 nits peak brightness. And then they come in either 1440p or 4K. The 1440p is 144 hertz or 240 hertz at 1440p, which is amazing, or 144 hertz at 4K. The only thing that I find slightly suspicious is one, they're charging $100 for the stand. Talk about an Apple move. Why would you charge the stand separately? They're saying that 46% of their community members wanted to have an option to buy the monitor without a stand and use a VESA arm instead. I cannot believe it's that high. Half? Nearly half of all people don't want a stand built in? I'm gonna, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And then on top of that, right now you can put a $100 de refundable deposit on their monitors, which I also don't get. Pre-ordering for tech like this for a company that hasn't made monitors previously, and then giving them $100, hoping that one, they're gonna meet their release times of Q3 and Q4 of this year, but then also that the product is actually gonna be as good as they say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them my money up front. I would wait until I see the product. Not, not just reviews from reviewers, but actually like on the shelf, making sure that it's, it's good. So whether or not you want to check this out is up to you. Let me know if you actually are considering a monitor like this down below. And if you would want a monitor without a stand that you would have to pay extra for. $100 for a stand, just bake it into the price. Anyways, that's gonna be it for hot news today. I'm sorry for the weird episode. My brain just was flarking all over the place. That's not even a word. Anyways, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Synergy, so that your mouse and keyboard setup isn't flarking all over the place. It sounds terrible, but it's a made up word. Yeah, check out Synergy, I'm done, bye. Wait, does it have an urban dictionary definition? It usually replaces the F word in a language called Flurnglish so that you can freely curse without actually cursing because nobody knows WTF you're saying. If said in the sense of something being flarky, then it means cool or awesome.